First Kings chapter six verse nineteen. We were talking about the house, the porch. Now we're inside the oracle, which would be the most holy place. And the oracle he prepared in the house. So inside the house. Within. To set there the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the only place that ark belongs is the most holy place. The oracle. And the only other, place, only other person that would be allowed in this oracle would be the high priest. Once it's set up. The oracle in the, in the fore part was 20 cubits in length. And 20 cubits breadth. And 20 cubits in height. So it's a cube. It's a complete pure cube of 20 cubits. Okay. And he overlaid it with pure gold. And so covered the altar which was of cedar. So you walk into this place if you could. It's gold everywhere. Pure gold. So Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold. Inside that house, gold. He made a porch, a portion, portion. That's the only place that shows up here in Ephesians 2.14. By the chains of gold before the oracle. Now, the only thing I would think by chains of gold being a, 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 a portion is if you ever seen these houses that got these beads hanging in the doorway and you just move the beads and you can go through that's the only thing I could think that would, would match these chains and he overlaid it with pure gold so gold is just everywhere <coughs> gold in the Bible pictures deity king God. And the whole house he overlaid with gold. Until he has finished all the house. So everything is gold. And the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. Now that would be probably the incense altar. Because that's the only altar that's in the house. Now there's no mention of the tables or the candlestick yet. The ark is already built. So already inside of this house, next to the oracle, is described as an altar that's gold. And according to the scriptures, that would be the altar incense that, again, uh, John the Baptist's father was in. Offering prayers. Being lit by the candles, which we'll read about later. And within the oracle, he made, now this is going to be interesting, two cherubim of olive, olive tree. He takes an olive tree and makes two cherubim, each 10 cubits high. That would be estimation, if you bring it to uh, one cubit being 18 inches, that would be 15 feet. Ten cubits high. And five cubits was the one wing of the cherub. Cherubs have wings. Angels do not. And five cubits the other wing of the cherub. From the uttermost part of the one wing. Unto the other outmost, uttermost part of the other were ten cubits. And the other cherubim was ten cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure. And one side. So they were alike. They were made alike with, with the olive tree. Which olive is a type of the Holy Spirit. They are 10 cubits high. Which is approximately 15 feet. They got a wingspan that reaches both of them. To the other side of the room. The other. The oracle. Now there's an interesting fact here. That he says. Back. Verse number. 19 that the oracle he prepared in house within to set there the ark of the covenant of the lord inside the ark i mean the ark goes inside the oracle excuse me solomon prepares two cherubims 
in the room where the ark is not there yet. Now, anybody remember what was on that ark? Two cherubims, correct? Two cherubims and two cherubims equal what? Four. Let's go to Revelation 4. Let's just see what Solomon just did. And don't even know if he knows what he did. Revelation chapter 4. And verse 6. We're in heaven. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. In the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. Full of eyes before and behind. And you match that with other scriptures. Those beasts. It says the first beast was like a lion, the second beast, beast like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. The four beasts, each of them had six wings with them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Four beasts with wings, and in Ezekiel, those are the cherubim. On top of the ark where the mercy seat is, is two cherubims looking down at that mercy seat. And they look down at that blood and like, what, what is that? When that priest came in twice, once a year. When Solomon builds his temple inside that oracle where the mercy seat is going to be, now there are four cherubim. Just like Revelation 4. God wanted to Solomon know that. Remember, these blueprints are given to David by God, given to Solomon. And who would know what's going on in here? Because only the high priest was supposed to go twice on one day a year, no one else. But here we got a place of all gold. The Bible says that the street of New Jerusalem, the street, not streets, is all gold. With all manner of stones as, as the walls and the foundations thereof. The doors, the gates are our pearls. The Bible speaks about Jesus is preparing for us mansions. No room. You're going to have all this gold and all these gems and pearls and God's going to give you a little shack? Put that in your modern Bible. The other cherubim was ten cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure and one size. They were alike. The height of the one cherubim was ten cubits, and it was of the other. So, with it being twenty cubits high, it only left a five foot space. Or five, yeah, five cubic space on the top. But the wings stretched. Both of them together, their wings would stretch the whole room. Man, must have been a miraculous, wonderful thing. And he set the cherubims within the inner house. Inside the inner house. The inner house. That's the oracle. You would walk through the house. Here's the table. Here's the, the lamp. The candlestick. Here's the golden altar incense. Here's the veil. And then you would go into the oracle. You would go to the most holy place. That would be where the ark is. Only the ark. With the mercy seat. Well now there's two cherubims there. They stretched forth their wings on the cherubims. Now why wasn't that during Moses, his tabernacle? Because it wasn't a fixed place. Now it's a fixed place. It ain't going to be Mukwa. Unless Babylon comes in after the sin of Judah. But it's fixed. This is where it is. And God's fix a bone is he's got four creatures around him. Holy, holy, holy. The wings of the cherubim so that the wing of the one touched the one wall. And the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall. And their wings touched one another in the midst of the house. So that's just massive. That's where you would get winged creatures. They're not angels. They are another class. They've got four faces, John tells us in Revelation. And he carved all the walls. Okay, here comes the walls of the house, round about with carved figures. That's the first time that word shows up. So, 
not wallpaper. On the walls of this house are carvings. They're figures, they're images, but they're not images to be worshipped. So Jeremiah will meet with the elders and he'll dig through the wall and he'll find the imagery that they're worshiping on the wall. That's what, that, this, may be, this may be actually what they're doing. Worshiping these images there, which I found that reference. The Lord just showed that to me right now. When Jeremiah comes to the elders and they're in the room, they're worshiping imagery on the wall. Well, here is image. But it's not to be worshipped. So what are they? Cherubim. And if he has the exact pattern of those beasts, well, there will be cherubim with four figures. The man, the eagle, the calf, and the eagle, the calf, and the lion. And if you haven't seen enough of them in Florida, palm trees. An open flower. It's funny how he says, they're, they're, they're like no, I mean, I would think a bud of a flower would be perfect, but all the flowers in God's glory, the great light that will be there from God, and they open all up. Within and without. So inside the house and outside the house. Not wallpaper, but carving. That took a lot of work. And the floor of the house he overlaid with gold, like the street of New Jerusalem. Within and without. Like you can't even imagine. And, and the thing is, this, this oracle has no window or windows like the house did. And can you imagine just the glory of God when that high priest would walk in there and God is light. There would be this light from nowhere because there's no electricity. And that light of God would bounce off that gold, bouncing off that gold, bouncing off that gold. The six, the six sides, that cube, like a dice. Ice cube, there's gold on the six sides of that room. That God's light, that thing must, when he peeled back that veil, it just must have been bright because he's walking on it. It's above his head, it's to the left, it's to the right, it's in front of him, and it's in behind him. Gold, and he can't walk in darkness in that room because if he were to walk or stub his toe on that, on that mercy seat or somewhere where he doesn't belong. <coughs> So God would have to give light where there should be no light, but there's light. And that pictures New Jerusalem, the gold street, the gold floor, the light of God without a light bulb, without the sun or the moon and stars. And for the entering of the oracle, how to get in it, he made doors of olive tree, again, type of Holy Spirit. The cherubims are olive tree, the doors are olive tree. The lintel. Now the lintel runs all the way back to the Passover night when they put the blood on the lintel above the door and on the post. And the side posts were the fifth part of the wall. 20%, I know. 20% of that uh, 20 uh, cubits was the door. It was a pretty big door. And what we're going to now is we're, get, we're looking at the entrance. We're looking at how to get into this place. Jesus said, I am the door. Whom the porter opened is John chapter 10. The only way you're going to get through these doors is by blood. <laughs> the Old Testament was blood of lambs and goats and, and uh, calves and all that. But that's, Jesus said, in the, I mean, Paul says in Hebrews that that couldn't cleanse you. And when Jesus Christ died, he rent that veil into two from the top to the bottom. That's how I get in. That's how I am settled. And to go through this oracle, you have to go through the olive tree. A type of Holy Spirit. The two doors also were of olive tree. So there are two doors there. And he carved upon them carvings. That's the only place that word shows up. So not only are the walls carved. The doors are carved with cherubims and palm trees and open flowers. And with that, oh, I, I don't know what an olive tree would, would look like. I think it'd be beautiful. He overlaid them with gold and spread gold upon the cherubims and upon the palm trees. 
So here is this beautiful wood of a tree, olive. And they got beautiful carvings. That looks great, guys. Bring the gold over. No, bring the pure gold. Overlay it with gold. Magnificent. Wonderful. The best for God. So he so also made he to door the temple temple post of olive tree a fourth part of the wall. Huge doors. Two doors. And the two doors were of fig excuse me, fir tree. I don't know why I'm gonna say fig. Fir tree. The two leaves of the one door were folding. They're folding doors, they're Dutch doors. And two leaves of the other door were folding. So here's one door, all right? When you come to the entrance, there's two doors. Swing, open. But each of those doors are cut in half. And if you ever seen a Dutch door, you can open you can close the bottom, open the top. You can close the top and open the bottom. That's what these doors so actually there are there are two leaves, two doors, and those doors are split in half. Two leaves of the one door, so cut in half, were folding. And the two leaves of the other door were folding. Um That could be a possibility too. There'll be closet doors that you see in uh, apartment places. I don't know, because those, those doors are, I mean, they fall, I, I don't know. There's, there are four door pieces for two doors. And we come back, there are trees of olive trees, fir trees, leaves, we're going back to the garden. The garden of Eden. Here are trees. I know it meant leaves as in door, but there were leaves there that Adam and Eve took, made them their own aprons of the fig tree. Yeah. And he carved thereon cherubims. I would assume with the four faces or just one cherub. But it says cherubims and palm trees and open flowers. And cover them with gold. Fitted. That's the only. I mean, that's the first time that word shows up. Fitted upon the carved work. Isn't it miraculous what we're reading? How wonderful this oracle is. And yet, let's see. Let me check the date here. BC six ten. Even the date here is completely all destroyed. It's been torn down, it's been broken down, it's been burned down, it has been gathered up and taken to Babylon. There are times when you're gonna we're gonna read through the book of Kings that they're gonna say they scraped the door the, the gold off the door and gave it to somebody and did something with it. And if, if they scraped it off the door, you wonder if they ruined the carved work. Excellent. Work here will be destroyed by sin within time. And he built the inner court with three rows of hewn stone and a row of cedar beams. I, I don't know. That's the court where the the priest would wash in the brazen uh, laver and the the brazen altar. But that would be outside. Still the inner court, because you would have the surroundings. In the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the Lord laid, the fourth year of Solomon. We read that early in, the, in chapter 6. In the month of Zip. And we believe that the Zip was, was this earlier. Second month. Second month. This is the 480th year after they've come out of Egypt. And in the eleventh year, in the month of Bull, that's the only time this word is shown, used, Bull, which is the eighth month. So it's seven years and six months, which is this eighth month 
was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof, and according to all the fashion of it. So it was seven months in building. Now notice it says seven months. It didn't mention, I mean, seven years. It didn't mention the six months. And so when you get the king ran, reign 40 years, well, there could have been some months there. So, seven years to build this temple. Now, let's go to John chapter 2, verse 20. John 2, 20, about the temple being built. Now, there's, there's a temple going to be built by Nehemiah and Ezra, Jerusalem, and Nehemiah. In John chapter 2, verse 20, they're admiring the temple of Herod. Lord Jesus, look how wonderful this thing is. And Jesus says, listen, three days and three nights, we're going to destroy this temple and we're going to raise it up again. And he ain't talking about the building. He's talking about his body. He's talking about the death, burial, and the resurrection. And they say, 20, well, verse 19, Jesus answered sin unto them. Destroy this temple, again, pointing to himself, upon this rock. Upon this rock. I mean, if, if the Catholic Church wants to say that rock is Peter, they should say, well, what's this temple? Who's he pointing to? They ought to be saying, all right, the Catholic temple then. If it's about this. If this rock is Peter, this temple, well, they, they named their, their thing wrong. It should be temple. This temple. Not the building himself. Destroy this temple, which you guys are going to do. <laughs> and in three days, I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 40 and six years was this temple in building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spank of the temple of his body. And therefore he was, therefore he was risen from the dead. And his disciples remembered that he had said thus. So, the Jews, talking about with this temple, let me get some notes here. The temple in which they then were was at, then were, where was that which was commonly called the second temple, built after the return of the Jews to, to Babylon. The temple Herod the Great commenced repairing or began to rebuild here right now the 18th year of his reign that is 16 years before the birth of Christ this is Joseph Armelius the temple that Jesus is right now 16 years before he was born Herod to say hey I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it up I'm gonna build it up I'm gonna take care of it the main body of the temple was completed in nine years and a half it took Solomon seven years the main part Yet the temple, with its outbuildings, was not entirely complete in the time of our Savior. Herod continued to ornament, decorate what they're talking about right now, all the great things added to it, the stones. Ornament it to perfect it, even till the time of Agrippa. As Herod began to rebuild the temple 16 years before the birth of Jesus, and as it were, he mentioned, happened in the 30th year of the age of Jesus. So the time which he had been occupied in the 46 years, the circumstance is one of the many in the New Testament, which shows the accuracy of the evangel the people wrote about. It. He built the temple. He adorned the, the, the temple. It took 46 years to do all the things. And this temple, when Jesus Christ, when he's 12 years old, is sitting in it, it's still being garnished, still being lavished by Herod. But that temple would fall too. In 680, 60 or 80 AD, I can't think of it. So both these temples are gone. And we read today in Matthew that there's going to be a temple again. And he says the warning of the desolation spoken about Daniel is when that Antichrist is seated in the most holy place, the oracle that we are in now. 
that doors, those curtains are going to be opened up and the world's going to see, there he sits. God has never sat on that, that mercy seat physically. Now his presence has been there, but never as a image of a man sitting, except the Antichrist. And then the Bible speaks about it again. There'll be a temple in the millennium where Jesus will be. The Levites will be. There's much on that temple. All the beauty that Solomon put to it, it was destroyed by Babylon. All the beauty that Herod put to it was destroyed by Rome. The people that dressed up the temple where Jesus kicked over the tables, where Jesus preached, where J Jesus taught, where that woman cast her two pence, where they were getting mad with Jesus, where all that would be destroyed also. And even the disciples said, Jesus, look how wonderful this place is. It's going to come down. 